since we were young, whether by chance or on purpose, there have been times when adults have instilled ideas of superiority and inferiority in us. Many parents always want their children to excel, inadvertently turning their lives into a race on all fronts. When they are young, these children must go through the race of education, and as they grow up, they must step into the race of career success. Following that is the race to start a family, have children, and so on. One undeniable truth is that our lives today are passing day by day under the pressure of invisible forces, burdening our shoulders, and causing us to live in constant worries. Certainly some may think, if we don't struggle, how can we progress? Competition is a means of survival, a way to develop. Without struggle, humans will remain stagnant. That is true, but should we keep struggling endlessly until our lives pass us by? Moreover, every race has winners and losers, leaders and followers. So, how can anyone always win without ever experiencing defeat? If that's the case, what is the solution here? According to the philosopher Marcus Aurelius, he once said, It is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. Explaining the above statement by the Roman Emperor, it is not external events that cause distress and tension for people, but rather how we assess and perceive these events that sparks these negative energies. Our mindset determines our perspective on the world. Regardless of how negative a situation may be, if we view it with a positive outlook, I assure you, it will not disrupt your inner stability. Therefore, even if we have been conditioned to believe that life requires competition, the solution I propose here is to simply have a different perspective on losing, and all issues will be resolved satisfactorily. Is becoming a loser a bad thing? The answer doesn't lie with anyone or any advice. It depends on how you perceive it. The philosopher Epictetus, a Stoic, once spoke very valuable words about what we often pursue in life, that the achievements that society today considers signs of success, such as money and fame, are insignificant compared to the values that can only be found within each individual. Epictetus believed that constantly chasing after achievements and the recognition of others makes our happiness dependent on external factors. At some point we may realize that seeking joy and the values of happiness from others is not advisable. However, the fear of being seen as losers has made us willing to endure anything to gain the approval of others. Placing too much value on material possessions and fame, Epictetus argued, makes us dependent and robs us of the opportunity to attain true happiness and freedom. According to him, we must be willing to let go of what he called the trivial things. Even if this makes us complete losers in society, it is not something we should be overly concerned about. However, this video of ours is not intended to support neglecting oneself or becoming someone who lacks ambition. Instead, it explores Epictetus's philosophy and helps us understand how to determine the important aspects of life. It also explains why being a loser isn't necessarily a bad thing. From the perspective of Stoic philosophy, the concept of a loser is not fixed by anyone's standards. In reality, whether someone is a loser or not depends on how each individual evaluates their abilities and success. And of course, this notion of losing is never permanent. At the present moment, with certain beliefs and biases, you might be a loser, but who knows, in the future as eras, societies and cultures change, you might become a winner. As I mentioned before, no one remains a winner throughout their life. So the Stoic philosophers advise us not to misunderstand these concepts, as it truly is a detrimental approach. In the context of modern society, if we place losers within it, it often relates to the possession of external assets like money and fame. People usually have a specific benchmark for success determined by wealth and reputation. Therefore, those who lack them are often easily dismissed and labeled as failures. However, Epictetus and Stoic philosophy argue against the pursuit of too many external values. This philosophical school has a very clear perspective that its mission is to train the human spirit to become tougher and more composed when facing the pains and pressures of life. The Stoic viewpoint holds that our suffering is a result of choosing the wrong judgments. Stoicism does not mean being strict or miserable. On the contrary, 
This philosophy believes that to progress toward happiness we need to live in harmony with our inner selves and the world. Life, from this philosophical standpoint, is divided into three parts. The first group is what we can control. This is also the group that Stoicism advises us to focus on. The second group is what we cannot control. And the third group is what we can partially control. These are the two groups that we should disregard and plan for, according to the Stoic philosophers. So what can we control here? The answer lies in our actions, thoughts, perspectives, and other factors originating from ourselves. These are the things that Epictetus emphasizes we should wholeheartedly focus on. Because money, fame, or anything happening in the external world are all unreliable. We cannot have complete control over them, we cannot change them, and they are easily influenced by external factors. Explaining this perspective in the context of the theme we are pursuing in today's video, we understand that Epictetus is emphasizing that we should not live by placing too much value on the recognition of others. Instead, we should seek happiness from within and not let others determine our self-worth. Once we grasp this mindset, we will realize that becoming a failure is not something to be feared. It does not affect our ability to achieve happiness and true freedom. In reality, the issue lies in our efforts to avoid failure. You may not be aware that learning to be a loser can bring us great benefits, such as helping us attain inner peace in a world filled with competition. However, mastering the art of losing is not an easy task. The philosophers remind us that we must nurture a great deal of tolerance, as only then can we shed our desires for victory. Learning to be a loser, the first thing we must do is practice within our own family, with our spouses, friends, and ourselves. Next, we must learn how to accept defeat gracefully in the face of those who carry themselves more victoriously in life. I believe that those who have not learned to lose and accept defeat have not truly understood the meaning of victory. Talking about learning to be a loser may sound grandiose, but in reality, it's straightforward as explained by philosophers. It's a journey where we learn to nurture tolerance for ourselves. We must understand that the best mindset to navigate life is not to overvalue oneself and not to undervalue others. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, and if we place too much importance on ourselves and belittle others, we will only invite trouble upon ourselves. Because in reality, excessive self-importance is a terrifying mindset trap. Once trapped within it, you can be buried in a life full of promises and illusions forever. Think about how many people have destroyed their careers because they thought too highly of themselves, were arrogant, and underestimated others. Those who exaggerate their own importance and become overly self-satisfied often end up with disastrous outcomes. Everything should be balanced, and when you realize you've crossed the line, it's often too late. Have you heard the saying, confidence is one thing, but blind confidence will only lead to destruction? When someone is excessively confident, they believe they are always right, and at that point, they can get dangerously close to their own downfall at any time. Therefore, truly intelligent individuals face themselves rationally. They understand that they are just ordinary people, living their daily lives, without the ability to control everything in advance. The more we humble ourselves, practice humility, and show kindness, the more we will prosper. Therefore, the best mindset for navigating life is this. Do not overvalue yourself and do not undervalue others. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, and if you prioritize yourself too much and look down on others, you will only invite trouble upon yourself. Socrates, the founder of philosophy when praised by others, simply said, The only thing I know is my own ignorance. Throughout a person's life, excessive contentment is what one should fear the most. Let go of the habit of self-importance and you can live a good life. Always remember that the desire to win and exaggerating one's own position will not truly reflect our worth in life. Only when we do not hold ourselves in excessive esteem, do not belittle others, are friendly, and communicate positively, can we smile at life. Therefore, no matter when or where, being a good person always requires maintaining a calm and composed attitude, acknowledging the strengths of our friends instead of scrutinizing their weaknesses. This is the right way to become a better person. Through today's video, we have explored a fresh perspective on losing 
and if you find the content we've shared useful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to continue the journey with us in the future. Thank you for watching our video and we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming videos.